Now, let's start the fundamental of HPLC. This course is mainly focusing on the concepts and hardware of HPLC. This part shows the role of column and separation modes in HPLC. This is the flow diagram of HPLC. Sample is introduced into column with the mobile phase, then separated by the column contained in the oven. Separated compounds are detected by detector, then the concentration change is converted into electronic signals as output. After that, chromatogram is drawn by the workstation, and target compounds can be quantified. In this part, what happens in the column is explained. Now, as shown in the previous chapter, multiple compounds in the sample are injected simultaneously. The reason they can be separated is the difference in their moving speed through the column. Now let's take a closer look at why the difference in moving speed occurs. Here shows the three key factors in the column, solute, mobile phase, stationary phase. The solute are compounds contained in the sample. The mobile phase is liquid flowing constantly through the column. Stationary phase is chemical groups that are chemically bonded on the surface of spherical particles, which is called packing material. Although there are three kinds of interactions between these three factors, but for now, let's focus on the interactions except for the one between the stationary phase and the mobile phase. The separation mechanism is very simple. If the interaction between solute and mobile phase is stronger, the solute will elute faster. If the interaction between the solute and the stationary phase is stronger, the solute will elute slower. The difference in the strength of affinity of the solute to the mobile phase and to the stationary results in a different moving speed. That's why target compounds can be separated in the column. What are these interactions? Mostly there are chemical interactions among the chemical compounds. And the type of the interactions determines the separation modes. There is also a size exclusion mode that does not use a chemical interaction for separation. Following slides will describe the typical separation modes. This slide describes the separation modes in HPLC. The first two modes. Reversed phase mode and normal phase mode have very similar separation mechanism that can be simplified to the relationship between water and oil. Water and oil have different properties and they are not miscible. When the sample is added to these two liquids, if the sample is oily, it will show stronger affinity, in other word, interaction to oil. If the sample is watery, it will show stronger interaction to water. The difference between the normal phase and the reversed phase is their opposite natures of the respective stationary phases. Oily property is called hydrophobic and watery property is called hydrophilic. Similarly, the interaction between oily compounds and oily stationary phase is called hydrophobic interaction, and the interaction between watery compounds and watery stationary phase is called hydrophilic interaction. The stationary phase of the reversed phase mode is hydrophobic and oily, and the mobile phase is hydrophilic and watery. The stationary phase of the normal phase mode is hydrophilic and watery, and the mobile phase is hydrophobic and oily. Sometimes these two modes are also called distribution modes. The third mode is ion exchange mode. It is easy to imagine. For example, the cationic stationary phase have the interaction with anionic samples. Since the electronegativities of compounds are different, the interaction between target compounds and stationary phase are also different. That's why, anionic compounds can be separated. This mode is called anion exchange mode. Another mode, cation exchange mode employs anionic stationary phase to separate the cationic target compounds. These two modes are called ion exchange modes. The last mode, size exclusion mode does not use chemical interaction. In this mode, the target compounds are separated by their solvated sizes. Larger molecules and smaller molecules go through the column in different path lengths. In addition to the words, 
hydrophobic and hydrophilic described in the previous slide, this slide describes another word, polarity. What does the polarity of compound mean? In physical chemistry, it's defined by the dipole moment of compound. And dipole moments occur due to the localization of electrons. Water is known as a polar compound because oxygen and two hydrogen atoms form angled bonding that generate strong dipole moment. By contrast, the symmetric steric structure of methane affords zero dipole moment resulting in non-polar property. However, in the world of chromatography, hydroquinone shown in this slide is a polar compound even its dipole moment is zero. This is because hydroquinone have two hydrophilic hydroxyl groups. Also, because hydrophilic compounds have high polarity, it is common to call them polar compounds. That's why sometimes hydrophilic is expressed as polar. In other words, high polarity and highly hydrophilic are same meaning, and low polarity and highly hydrophobic are same meaning. In general, the presence of hydroxyl, carboxyl, or amino groups increases the polarity, or hydrophilicity of the compounds. And the presence of alkyl groups, such as methyl groups, or benzene rings decreases polarity and increases hydrophobicity of the compounds. Separation modes based on the difference in polarity of compounds in the sample, are also called the distribution modes. Here shows two types of the distribution modes the reversed phase and the normal phase. The reversed phase is a combination of less polar stationary phase and high polar mobile phase. To put it simply, if the stationary phase is oily and the mobile phase is watery, the oily compound can be retained because of the similar property of the mobile phase and the oily target compound. Technically speaking, when the compound is highly hydrophobic, the hydrophobic interaction to the stationary phase is large. That's why it can be retained. The opposite polarity combination of the stationary phase and mobile phase is called the normal phase. In this case, watery or polar compound have strong hydrophilic interaction with highly hydrophilic stationary phase. That's why it can be retained. Historically, normal phase was firstly put into practical abuse and then the reversed phase came out. But now, the reversed phase mode is more commonly used. From next slide, the details of separation modes will be described. This figure shows the separation mechanism of the reversed phase chromatography. As shown in the figure, hydrophobic C18 chains are introduced to the surface of packing materials in the column. When the compound with the hydrophobic carbon structure come closer to the C18 chains, it will be retained by the hydrophobic interaction. And multiple compounds will be separated by the difference in hydrophobicity. The reversed phase mode has wide range of application and high separation efficiency. On the other hand, it is difficult to retain hydrophilic compounds such as saccharides. The typical mobile phase should be a mixture of an aqueous solution that has a weak elution power like water or a buffer solution, and the organic solvent that has strong elution power such as methanol or acetonitrile. The retention can be adjusted by changing concentration of organic solvents. In case of ionic compounds, retention can be adjusted by pH. For stationary phase, alkyl chains such as C18 and C8, which are highly hydrophobic, and phenyl with resonant structure are generally employed. This slide shows the typical analysis of the reversed phase chromatography. When a mixture of alkyl phenons having the same basic structure but different alkyl chain lengths are separated by the C18 stationary phase, the compounds with shorter alkyl chain elute faster from the column. In other words, Lowly hydrophobic compounds elute faster, and highly hydrophobic compounds are retained in the column for a long time and elute slower. In this way, chromatographic separation is accomplished by the difference in the hydrophilicity of the compounds. The figure shows the separation mechanism of the normal phase chromatography. 
The hydrophilic interaction between stationary phase and target compounds in the sample is used for the separation. Since the normal phase chromatography generally does not use water as the mobile phase, it is suitable for the analysis of hydrolyzable compounds. The normal phase chromatography is also convenient for preparative purification, because mobile phase consists of large portion of less polar solvents that are easy to be evaporated and removed. Saturated hydrocarbon compounds cannot be retained in this mode, because they don't have polar groups to interact with high polar stationary phase. This mode has high structural recognition ability to separate the geometrical isomers. Generally this mode is sensitive to the changes in temperature and it will take a certain time for the baseline stabilization, because less polar solvents with low heat capacity are employed as mobile phase. The less polar solvents having weak elution power such as hexane are the principal component of the mobile phase. On the other hand, highly polar solvents such as ethanol and isopropanol having strong elution power are used as another component of the mobile phase. If the target compounds are ionic, its retention can be adjusted by adding acid or base. The hydrophilic interaction chromatography hillock, is commonly used for saccharides analysis, and the typical mobile phase is a mixture of water and acetonitrile. Hillock is considered as one of normal phase chromatography in some cases, because the retention time is increased when the mobile phase composition is changed to increase ratio of organic solvent. This is completely different from the retention behavior of the reverse phase mode. That's the reason why some people say hillock belongs to the normal phase chromatography. Typical stationary phase are highly polar groups such as cyano group and amino group, or hydroxo group remained on unmodified silica gel. This figure shows the separation mechanism of the ion exchange chromatography. When the stationary phase has negative charge, cationic compound will be retained by electrostatic interaction. This combination of anionic stationary phase and cationic sample is called cation exchange mode. Its name is decided by the charge type of target compounds. The combination of cationic stationary phase and anionic sample is anion exchange mode. In general, cations and anions cannot be separated within a single analysis. The column can retain one but the other one will be excluded due to the repulsive force created by the same charge with the stationary phase. When the ions that have same polarity as the target compounds are increased in the mobile phase, the competition for covering stationary phase become fierce, resulting reduced retention time. On the other hand, when the ions that have same polarity as the target compounds are decreased in the mobile phase, the competition for covering stationary phase become calm, resulting increased retention time. Focusing only on the charge of the target compound, a short retention time could be obtained increasing the pH in the cation exchange mode and decreasing the pH in the anion exchange mode. In addition, the types of stationary phases are sometimes categorized into strong or weak anion exchange and cation exchange. The strong ion exchange is the separation mode in which the stationary phase is always charged regardless of the mobile phase pH. The weak ion exchange is a separation mode, in which the dissociation and the suppression of the stationary phase can be controlled by adjusting the mobile phase pH. In other words, the presence or the absence of the charge can be controlled in the weak ion exchange mode. This figure shows the separation mechanism of the size exclusion chromatography, so called SEC. As shown in the figure, a typical packing material for SEC has pores. The structure of the porous packing material is similar to those of other separation modes such as reversed phase, which can increase the surface area of the packing material. In general, the pore size of these pores is large at the inlet of the particle surface and gradually becomes small in the inner of the particle. Completely different from other separation modes. There is no specific substituent as the stationary phase on the surface of the SEC packing material. 
That's why SEC can separate molecules only by their sizes. Large molecule can enter only near the entrance of the pores, but small molecules can permeate deeply into the pores. When molecules moving through the column, the moving paths for small molecules are longer than those for large molecules. Therefore, large molecules elute fast and small molecules elute slow, and separation is accomplished based on the difference in molecule sizes. When the sizes of all molecules are larger than the pore inlet size, they cannot be separated even if they have different sizes respectively. When the sizes of all molecules are small enough to reach the bottom of the pore, smaller molecules cannot be separated. In SEC, the former is called exclusion limit and the latter is called permeation limit. SEC is broadly classified into the non-aqueous mode and the aqueous mode. The non-aqueous mode is generally called gel permeation chromatography, so-called GPC, which is suitable for the separation of synthetic polymers or other samples that are difficult to dissolve in water. The aqueous mode is suitable for the separation of water-soluble polymers, like polysaccharide or protein, using water or a buffer solution as an eluent. Among them, SEC for biological samples such as protein is sometimes called gel filtration chromatography, so-called GFC. In addition, SEC columns have no design stationary phase, and the sample elute before the T0 time. Consequently the words of the elution time in the eluent are used instead of the retention time in the mobile phase. That is all for this part. Thank you for your attention. Excellence in science. Shimazu.